Hi, everyone. Welcome to Domain Sherpa, and thanks for tuning in to the podcast with the best domain name and digital asset content in the world. We've got a brand new Domain Sherpa review today featuring Braden, Shane, and Josh. We cover a lot of ground on today's show where we start with the domain game featuring legend.org, spinach.org, uponly.com, and telecommuting.com. And then we've got the Namejet and the Jet segment sponsored by Namejet. And we talk about some domains coming up for auction, including qcards.com, vstudio.com, for Forum.net and forum.org. We use those forum domains actually to talk about which non-com extensions are the most popular or the best. Talk about that a lot throughout today's show. We also talk about the new upcoming Domain Sherpa website relaunch and also the new Media Options website, which is actually live right now. So go and check that out at MediaOptions.com. Let's go. We also talk about the new Lease to Own option on Afternick and some other related items. And remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can also watch Watch the video version at DomainSherpa.com and on our YouTube channel at DS.TV. You can also listen to the shows on Apple and Spotify and other podcast platforms as well. So make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and all that good stuff where you can. Also, we're now integrating our shows with Muse.ai, which provides new search functionality for the shows and also the transcripts. So definitely check all that out. And big shout out to Dan.com, the number one place in the world to buy and sell your domains with a special platform made for domain investors. Also, special for today... One of our audience members is selling a portfolio of domains, including rareidea.com, compatible.com, chatnow.com, nxtv.com, and rvup.com, along with some others. They're pricing them to sell, so if you're interested, hit them up directly on Twitter via the handle at DomainFluent. That's D-O-M-A-I-N-F-L-U-E-N-T, right? And we're just helping here. This isn't a paid ad or anything, so you might be like, yo, JT, why are you doing that? It's because we walk the walk, and we're always down to help our listeners when we can. So definitely hit them up if you're interested. And finally, I want to give some happy birthday shout outs. It's happy birthday day here on Sherpa. We mentioned it on the show, but it was just Braden's birthday. So happy belated birthday, my dude. We taped the show on the one and only Michael Seiger's birthday. So happy birthday to you too, bro. And this show is airing on Shane's birthday. So happy birthday to Sugar Shane, honey Shane. Yeah. All right. With that, it's now time to get into this episode of Domain Sherpa where all roads lead to domains. So let's go. What's up, Sherpa Network? Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jonathan Tenenbaum, a.k.a. JT, a.k.a. Jayon, a.k.a. Sherpa Winfrey, a.k.a. John Burgundy, and I'm the host and producer of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Today's show is a Domain Sherpa review where we get into the minds of successful domain investors using real examples so we can learn strategies and tactics to become more successful domain name investors ourselves. These are the experts. They are the OGs, and I'm super excited. I got my boys on the show with me. Let's break down the four segments of the Domain Sherpa a review real quick. We got the grand opening. It's what I'm doing right now. It's where I do all the AKAs, all that good stuff. Uh, then we get into the domain game. That's where we hear about what the Sherpas recently bought or sold. Everybody guesses. We keep scoring, get some swag to the winner. Then we got Namejet Gonna Jet. That's where we review a list of domains coming up for auction on Namejet. And then last but certainly not at least, we got grand closing where we discuss anything that we have not already covered, talking about what's going on in the space, looking at the market trends and allowing the guests, my co host to promote and talk about anything that we have not already discussed. So with that, let's go ahead and introduce the Sherpas over to my right. I got my boy, Josh Reason, a.k.a. Bjorn Borg, a.k.a. Prince Harry, a.k.a. Harry Kane, a.k.a. Prince Harry Kane, a.k.a. Chicka Chicka Slim Shady, a.k.a. Jared Leto in Fight Club before he gets beat down. I just want to destroy something beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So what's going on, my dude? Josh, how we doing, man? What's up? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I kind of touched a little bit on the bleach blonde. You know what I'm saying? We're in the middle of the summertime. Do you want to give us your pickleball, your pickleball, like, breakdown update now? Or you want to wait till later? Like, what's 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 good with you? Should uh, we just address the hair? Is there, like, too much chlorine in the pool there? Or what, what happened? Hey, man. Florida, it's hot. It's hot. You know what they say? Yeah, it's just summertime. Summer, summer, summertime, man. <laughs> I don't think that's what they say when they when when they bleach blonde. Yeah, you get a little lemon in the hair, and boom. 
<laughs> yeah. I just think it's great that he's got hair to do that with. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like. I know. My wife, my wife has been saying for the last five years, you're going you're going to go bold. Your dad's bold. You're going bold. I can see you thinning. Nothing is happening. She's oh, wrong. I'm going to have hair. She's wrong. Wow. Wow. You really just, you say, and you putting it on record like that and everything. That's oh. not going to jinx. That's like oh. being on a long car ride. And when the minute you say like, hey, you know, we're making great time. We're not hitting any traffic at all. You know, and once my wife does that, I'm just like, don't you dare, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, Josh, I had nothing going on. And then 45, either my either my testosterone level kicked up to new levels, something. I don't know what the heck happened. Like it just all of a sudden started happening. I thought I was having a nervous breakdown, but it <laughs> oh, was. Man. Yeah, it was. It was a oh. big switch. Same with the eyesight. Like you're looking at menus and the light the the slight dim light with no problem and the next year you got like you brought your own light and your own glasses just trying to read how much the big margarita is uh, <laughs> okay oh, i'm okay with 45 no, that's fine i'll okay. take 45 yeah no that's oh, what my wife said i'm like i'm bringing it from the back of the neck to the front of the head and she goes no 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 you're good you're oh, good you're doing the comb like, over you- mullet I, no, I'm I talking actually, about the hair plugs. You know, you take they just take out your whole neck and just bring it and set all the plugs up front. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, it's like all LeBron. Right. You see LeBron, he's got like the whole brand new cornrow up here, or patch, and then in the back, it's bald. He's like, oh, man, it's moving faster <laughs> than I can bring him forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just go sucks. for the comb over. Just do the co- I actually own combover.com. I don't know uh, why. Of do. course. Oh, I like uh, it. Uh, I could yeah, put man. a picture of you on there if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep it moving. All right. So then, you know what, Josh? Let's do the pickleball update a little bit later. But I want to hear what's good. I want to know what's going on with you and all that good stuff. But in the meantime, let me continue around the horn. Below me to my right, I got my boy Braden Pollock, a.k.a. Tony Stark, a.k.a. Benjamin Button, a.k.a. Eat Bray Love. I mean, talk about guys that like reverse age, you know what I'm saying? A.k.a. Braden Statham, a.k.a. Bradenton Pollock, the Archduke of Calabasas, who, as I have to disclaim every time I say it, is not from Calabasas. But it's still all good. And it's not that your domain is worthless. It's just that it's worth less. And it's not that you're homeless. You're just homeless, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, live from a new location again, as you're doing your little, uh, you know, kind of summer, get, find a house tour. Absolutely. You live? Yeah. Yeah. So what's good. Are you in LA at the moment or where, where are you I, at? I am. I am in LA staying right. at a different house. I blurred it. All right. Project the innocent. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> But so that's what's uh, up. yeah, yeah, you know, Lisa's out on a, a three week backpacking trip. She's in the middle of it right now. Oh, uh, it's, damn. Okay. It's like a thousand degrees and she's out there Oof. with 30 pounds on her back. She's doing 20 to 25 miles a day and then sleeping on the ground, getting up oh. and doing it the next day. Damn. And, and uh, so is she in the, in like out towards the West Coast? Like, is this like, uh, where no, is she's she up in Europe? In, like, where is she? Yeah, West Coast. She's up in Oregon right now. She's doing the Pacific yeah. Crest Trail. I love which it. Is, from Mexico to Canada, 2,650 miles. <laughs> no way. She's not doing yeah. that in three weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. She, she, no, she's shooting for, uh, I think she's like doing 260 miles or something like that on this trip. Um, wow. But she's already done like 1,200 miles of it. That's crazy, man. Well, cool, dude. That's awesome. I love that kind of stuff. And, for her, uh, no. For me, I mean, like, like for me, if I go hiking, first of all, Hiking is just an asshole word for for walking under. Okay, <laughs> so walking up a hill. That's all it. Is. So she, so she's uh, for, for me like oh, oh if somebody wants to go for a hike cool for an hour hour and a half but it ends like with a smoothie. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like we finish up at Starbucks, get to lunch. <laughs> you know that's not she's like it's like getting off a disney ride all all roads all rides into the gift shop you know what i mean and, yeah right uh, next to the gift shop <laughs> all right but shane man that's kind of your jam you're like I, you're, was, you're, I was on the cdt the the it's also from new mexico to um to to uh canada but it's it's five hundred thousand feet of ascent and de- and five hundred thousand of descent on that trail so it's a uh, but it's not, it's all above 10,000 feet. So nothing's below 10,000 feet. 
So yeah, okay. I like it. But you know, the funny, I, this is a funny story. I, I was thinking today how Morgan, you know, is doing a lot of hiking and I'm really proud of him. He's, he's learning his kit and he's learning his bag. And I was laughing just in my head. I envisioned, <laughs> envisioned Braden pulling up in like a $400,000 B class motorhome and just sitting right beside him while he's laying <laughs> on the dirt in a tent. And then exactly he's cooking right. like meals in there and like, man, I love hiking. I love hiking. And I yeah, swear yeah. to God, that's what I was thinking earlier. I'm like, I know I didn't think of Morgan as a hiker, but it, I mean, he's doing a great job and he's really, really learning a lot. Oh, he's there. legit. You know, he's, he snow hikes. Yeah, he no, he's in the he's, snow and then, and then digs down. He digs a grave um, in the snow and then gets down in there and zips himself into a little bag. I don't know. It's like bears come along. What is that? Like a frozen burrito. I don't know why. he does. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, big shout out to Morgan. And I, you know, I saw like a, um, he posted on Twitter, I think, and I thought it was super dope and and totally on brand for him. Like, you know, he's got his spreadsheet. He's like, you know, I went to the store and I bought some new gear and I I, I cut three pounds off my pack. Here's my breakdown. And it's yeah. like, you know, and uh, and I just realized, like, because I, I when I pack, I, that's how I pack when I travel. Right. I My my wife gives me a hard time because I actually pack twice. I'll pack, then I'll unpack and then I'll pack better. You know what I mean? Because I'm just all about like, just trying to like, well, imagine that carrying necessarily... that weight for a month, like, you know, and there's people yeah. that are hiking for six months. So he's exactly right. Like if you're going to hike you, it's weight. I think you're more space probably. Right. Like, well, you're... yeah. And it's just making sure I have, like, I'm, I don't necessarily do it to bring less. Cause it's just, but just making sure I bring the right stuff. You know what I mean? And, uh, but I love the precision, you know, and like that to me, like the preparing and the for long you know, the distance. Whole, the whole thing about it is just so cool. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, he gets after it. I mean, I well, he's kind of who put you on to Tahoe in some ways, right? As far as some of the detail in and around Tahoe. Is that right, Braden? Like Ish. when you guys were. We talked about, he was actually going to going to move to Truckee. And uh, then there was a financial thing that could be happening. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. But I was like, you know, you need to not live in California anymore. You know, if you're going to go to truck, oh, you should just keep going in. Oh, you're talking about some tax implications. I can read between the lines. I see what you're saying. So, I could read between the things in the pack. Yeah, well, you know, if you're if you're going to have a liquidity event, you know, oh. and you're going to move, like move to yeah. a place with no state income tax. Sure. But, but as far as that, you know, like Lisa's gear is all ultra light because she does mm-hmm. long distance backpacking. And it's like the toothbrush is that big. Her Her bag, her giant bag weighs one pound. Her tent weighs one pound. Everything's yeah, yeah. super ultralight. And it's like everything is, you know, her headlamp, it, it, she, everything is, she she bought is ultralight. Yeah, yeah, totally. It it, up. Yeah, and I can see you doing the glamping thing. Like, you know, like you said, like Morgan's all like under like the sticks and things. Like there's some of these shows too, these reality shows like Alone. Have you ever seen that one? That's where they basically oh, yeah. throw it. It's like kind of like Naked and Afraid, you know, same type of deal, except they don't make you actually do the whole, hey, be buck naked out in the woods and the bugs mm-hmm. and stuff. But <laughs> they'll put you in some really unfriendly terrain and it's like, hey, survive as long as you can. The last one off the off the island effectively wins. And uh you know, I would try watching that shit, but it was crazy because, like, I got in the habit of while I was watching it because during the show, the hardest part for these folks is really is, you know, shelter and food, you know. So them getting food is, like, the, the toughest thing because and then, you know, they're trying to fish and, you know, get protein. And the one guy was lucky enough to kill a deer with a bow and arrow and everything and that kind of shit. And basically that set him up to win the whole thing. Sorry for the spoiler alert, but as these – they're becoming, like, emaciated, like, just starving themselves in the wilderness – I would love to just eat cookies and shit while I watch that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just made me hungry for like the j- fattiest, worst possible food because I was just like, oh, that sucks for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm get, like I get weight loss tips combos. Off of Like I'm looking <laughs> at it I'm like, that's how you lose weight right there. Don't eat. Oh, don't eat. Just put yourself in a situation where you're eating like berries and stuff. And then, so, you know, then they're getting stomach cramps. And we'll get, like- we'll get back to domains. But the one, f- my favorite part of alone is a guy shot a, an elk or a moose, a giant animal, right? Like, is enough meat to win the whole show. And then an animal s- stole all his fat. Yeah. So he had the meat in one and fat in the other. And then he had to quit because he's like, without fat, I die. Protein, just the meat, I'll die. I had to have the fat to live. And it, I thought the fat is what makes you fat. The protein is what makes you lean. Yeah, but you yeah. can't survive without the fat. So it's a pretty interesting thing. But you know, you think oh, this yeah. guy kills a moose, has all the meat from the moose. And he's like, nah, I'll starve to death on on this i can't i can't win yeah so that's crazy man. yeah 
It's all it's crazy. But anyway, let's go. Last you, thing, you, you're, and, you're right about the the glamping though, because during COVID, I bought a, a Mercedes Revel. Oh, oh yeah, there. yeah, yeah. That, right, because we couldn't me the V class. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't get on plane, so you know we got the RV and and uh, even the even the you know it's got a bed inside. I got a. I swapped out the mattress for a memory foam mattress. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course like, you did. I took it to the next <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's the way you got to do it, man. You know. So. But we we were cooking in there, doing the whole whole oh, thing. I love we, the RV life too, oh, man. I mean, I you know, but uh, I don't know that I could ever get my wife to get down with it. But I think that you know, especially in camping, my kids aren't super into it. It's tough in Florida because there's only so many months out of the year where it's not either oppressively hot or the bugs and all that stuff are just pretty make it pretty miserable. But I do love the idea of uh, kind of where Shane, you know, Colorado, like where you were doing your thing. You just like, get out of your state. You know, yeah, and just go and do some of that. But um, and my last thing, and then we'll talk about domains. I'll intro Shane and we'll keep it moving. But yeah, the piece about alone, at my favorite part of the show is watching them do the shelters, though. That is my shit. Like them <laughs> doing the creating, like because different people will do the different methods where – you know, somebody will build like almost a full on log cabin. Someone else will dig like a big old yeah. hole in the ground and create. That shit's like, nicer a than my hut. Airbnbs that I rent sometimes. Dude, some of the people's stuff is like because it's like Swiss Family Robinson, they have enough time where overtime. But what they say is in the the uh, the series that I watched the season, they were um, you know, you got to be careful because if you spend too much time early perfecting your shelter, you're not <laughs> setting up your food source. Yeah. quickly enough in a meaningful way because then in the one i watched they were up to somewhere in canada and the weather had turned so it was like they only had so many weeks before like the ground froze and you know so yeah. berries and all these things were no longer available they needed to figure out how they were going to catch fish or get something <laughs> else set <laughs> rabbit so traps fun. and shit like that. i love it my wife said one time to me hey are you watching men <laughs> 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 watching dudes suffering yeah yeah you know, behind the computer hey. is not a lot of strong men all right all right all good all right let me finish up these aka's because we off on a couple of tangents already below oh, me we yet? got my boy shane culture aka sugar shane aka honey shane aka my bro aka blame it on the shane aka house of shane aka the cultivator doing it for the culture in shane in the membrane in shane in the blockchain i mean i got a lot for you man I'm, i can't even do them all because we'll be here all day but What's up, man? So you're back. Are you but you're back home in Illinois? You're done with the West yeah. Coast, East Coast. Did no, you get out did, to Vermont with uh, No, we're going in the fall to Vermont. We're gonna go for a month in October. So love it. yeah. As long as I can work remotely, I'll go anywhere. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. I can't I can't sit. Although I will say this, you miss some of the creature comforts of home. Like you get used to certain things. And if you're a creature of habit, it's hard to leave for six weeks, eight weeks. I'm sure. I don't have to preach to the choir here, but yeah, it's, that's oh, the one yeah. thing is you miss kind of your own bed and you, you miss that. But as far as man, 48 degrees to 65 degrees, 21% humidity, low oxygen for training. Like if you're going to train, train at 75% oxygen. I came back after six weeks. I'm running like a bitch. Like I'm killing it. <laughs> I, I I mean, you, you're, you Wait, think so, you're in shape, go do whatever yeah. you're doing at at 11,000 feet and do that for six weeks and come back, you will destroy everybody. It's okay, incredible. Yeah. So you mean you came back like a monster then? Um, yeah, no, like a monster. Yeah. Like yeah. I, it was, I wasn't even in good shape. Like I, I was, I haven't run in six months. I just started running when I got there and I ran a 5k. I run my 5ks at like 19, 20, 19 minutes. I ran 22, 56 there because it was up and down. Yeah. I, my lungs were hurting. And so when I came, but when I came back to Illinois at sea level, I Man, you're like, no they're like, who's this? Yeah. You're like, like you're the I new flash. For two years. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah, you read no, out the movie. Um, well, that's why the U S Olympic team, don't they train in yeah, Colorado? Colorado Springs is, has yeah. a whole bunch of people. Yeah. It's, it's legit. Like if you're going to train for a sport, I don't care what sport it is. And you want some endurance, you go to altitude. And then the, the, the key would be to sleep at altitude and live at al altitude and then train at um, sea level and then come back. So you want to train at sea level. So there's a whole process to it. That's why people do it. That's why people from the Alps and all that area and the cross country skiers are the best. So yeah, no, it, it's legit, but it is nice to change the scenery. It's nice to change at your what do they say that your your latitude and attitude yeah, you're at your yeah your latitude yeah. is your attitude man so and, uh, it's really good it was a great time just beautiful i like switching it up i look forward to doing it some more and keep yeah. moving all right i dig it man well all right well when let's I talk about 
When I first right. went to Tahoe, yeah, I had been running every morning. I laced up my shoes. I get out there. I ran a block and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like an <laughs> elephant sitting on your feet. lungs. Yeah. I, absolutely. Feet and I could not go very far. You're like, now, not only am I switching out the mattress, but I need to put oxygen in this, in the RV now, you know what I'm saying? So that way. Yeah. My, 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 my breasts better. per minute went from 14 to 16 and my resting heart rate went from 51 to 55 on the whole time. So that's how hard oh, wow. it is on your body. Like if you so, if you wear a whoop or an aura ring, you can see hundred percent the effects in your body. That's what I was going to ask you. So how you track you track that with with either one of those or both? Yeah, or I use your... I use both an aura ring and a whoop bracelet. And and like I say, I, my resting heart rate's like 46, 49 if I'm in shape. Um right now it's 49, but when I got there it was 56, 55, Damn, and then yeah. my breast per minute's 14, 14 2. And when I was there, it was over 16 every day when I slept. So it just shows you the difference and how, and that's a lot. I mean, think about your heart adding five beats per minute for your whole life. That's, you're going to lose some weight. Man. You're going to, yeah. And then same with breaths, you're breathing way heavier, uh, heavier yeah. and, and more often. So yeah, it's legit. I, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. Like I love looking at my body and, and trying to. <laughs> The peak. Yeah. I'm sure your wife does too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um <laughs> and hey, uh Josh, so do you do with your training that you're doing? Are you are you tracking your metrics, your, your that kind of stuff like closely as well? Like with, with, with some of what you're into? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I use whoop like Shane. Um <clears throat> and uh I can tell you that where we are is extremely taxing as well. Like yeah training set like i just got done with an after i went to the gym this morning and then uh trained this afternoon and it's tough like i hit like i'm hitting basically maximum strain um like almost every day um and he's right because i get to see it or i used to see it we share each yeah. other's data and I'm yeah, like, oh that's hitting, cool yeah. i didn't know that yeah. that's awesome so yeah he's hitting it <laughs> like he's hitting his 18 plus strain every day just from pickleball and other in training yeah yeah i should i should start doing that too i mean i run out here every day in the heat and all that stuff and it's a lot man but yeah it's a lot like like, but i'm not like as skinny as i should i eat too much junk food man it it makes a massive difference dude like compared and i I just got back from denver colorado uh where obviously is altitude Mm -hmm. and um that like kind of goes back to what shane was saying that's a different that's another it's, it's not it's not the same but it is tough right it's a different type of strain um so you know you don't sweat like buckets like you do here so it's not taxing in that way um but it is taxing on just in the fact that you're in altitude and the you know the breathing components not getting as much oxygen to the lungs yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, down here is kind of crazy so billy was down here visiting and we went for a run me billy and one of my older kid and uh he got like it was so hot and he was so not used to it that he basically had to like duck out like after he didn't complete the whole thing. And, uh, you know, he stayed down here for another week though. and kept working at it. So, you know, it's, it's a process, man. I mean, it is interesting getting out of your comfort zone in general, and this will be the last point. And then we'll, we'll move on with domains for real, for real. But the, um, but I think that's the thing about life and growth, right? Happens when you get outside your comfort zone, right? And I think this is a perfect example of that kind of thing where, you know, this is a very physical aspect of that, which is, you know, you're developing and development and, and evolution happening outside of your comfort zone. So let's get it. So let's talk some domains. Let's talk domain game. Let's see what's up. And we'll put this on the, uh, so for those of you listening, watching at home, we will have put on the, uh, the description when the actual domain talk starts. And that's this right now. Let's go. All right, Josh, you got to buy, you got to sell. You've been buying and selling domains while you've been training and traveling. I mean, the summer is always an interesting time for folks because it's, it's see what they're up to. Yeah, dude, I've been buying and selling, uh, the sales are going <laughs> going pretty steady. Like, um, I can't complain, man. Domain domaining is being good. I'll do. I'll. I think that Braden may have just seen the ones that I sold in the last couple of days. So that I'll, I'll, I'll tell issue. you if I if I know. All right. I just cool. sold it. I just sold a fourletter.com yesterday. It, it was tlag.com, or I can do a buy recently, which was legend.org, which is a nice one. That's nice. I like that one too. Let's, let's, well, let's talk about, let's do legend.org 
And then um, let's see how the game plays out and see if we might need you to float another float that other. And one that was a buy. Time. That was a buy. All hmm. right. So you bought legend.org. I just think that's a really cool name. And I mean, I like the four, the four characters great too, but T lag, we might have to have you just do both. I like the, when we talk about sales is cool because then you get the buy information and you really understand kind of the full sort of process for the domain. So I think that's really, you know, good for our listeners, but um, I just think legend.org is a badass domain. So let's start with that one. And uh, so Braden, man, what do you think? You, do you know what he bought it for? Or are you, are you? Legend? No, no, I have no idea. All right. Well, then, what do you think? What do you think he bought it for? Then are we going to throw our little phones up? We change oh, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. My bad. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm See, ready, look at me. Look at me. It's been a minute. It's been a week, and I already forget how um, we do shit here. Things could have um, changed. I don't know. I've been gone a while. No, no, you're good. Um, all right, all right. Um, let's see. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Oh, okay. I, let me know when we can flip it. Okay. Ready? All right. Boom. Oh, turn it. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. We got a, we got a decent, we got a spread here. We got, for those of you who are just watching or listening and not watching, Braden's at 3000 I'm at $3,499 and Shane's at 85 grand. Wait, wait you know, this is no, a, bu- no, 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 no. That was, hey, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> Dude, that's not my <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, yeah. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. I was like, I heard you say it out loud, and I go, what? Yeah. All right, so three thousand thirty four ninety nine, and then eight thousand five hundred, which makes more sense. Yeah. Um, Jesus, I'm not been gone right. that long. <laughs> I'm Shane, like, yo, Shane's the winner. <laughs> Who is? Shane's the winner. Ooh, okay, okay. What's the? Uh, how close to the pin? Ten G's. Ten G's. 10 G's. Oh, damn, man. All right. That's a, I mean, that's a legend. Like, that's that's a great name. That is you fantastic. did not get a good deal on it. I, okay. felt like I, got, I felt like I got a good deal on it. All right. You, you don't know if you got a good deal until it's over. <laughs> right. Oh, hey, well, you know, you make money on the buy. Yeah, on it's, a good, it's definitely a good name. No, I've I've actually never made money on a buy. I've actually only gotten money when I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right, a true right. statement, man. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I just mean generally speaking. I know what you mean. I'm Conceptually just, speaking. All uh, right, you so said those do... arguments with my dad. I think so. Yeah. By the way, I think that I'm willing to pay more for uh, top good orgs than most people right now. I'm quite, in, and so we're gonna see how that plays out over the next. Okay. So you're a buyer in the market on high level, high value dot orgs. And honestly, there's, you know, that's a fantastic name. Like I said, I wanted to just talk about it because I just thought that name pops for me for sure. Um, 10 G's, obviously, Braden, I think you paid a little bit more than we expected, but where did you buy it? And uh, like any story around that? Yeah, I bought it privately. I saw it listed recently for like 25 grand somewhere. Okay. Um, and... I thought I'd try my luck at 10 and that was like, it was like, it was like 10, take it or leave it. Like I understand that it's significantly less than your asking price, but I also understand that probably nobody's probably offered him 10 grand for that name. So, um, and I like it at 10. Um, so yeah, I'm, I was willing to pay for it. It's like, it's, it's kind of a name that I would, uh, probably sell for like 75 K plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and this is going to bring up an interesting conversation when we talk about some of the non dot coms, right? I think, and and when we say, you know, what extensions do we see as the, you know, we talk about it on a lot of shows, you know, what are we seeing as uh, extensions that are pretty hot at the moment, you know, based on offers and activity and all that kind of stuff. Org is always pretty consistent um, on the Namejet list. Not to give a spoiler alert away, but we have a name that the dot net and dot org version of the same same left of the dot word. And uh, so, you know, I want to have that conversation when we get there to kind of talk a little bit about the differences between the two. But I do like org better than net. And uh, are you seeing activity on the sell side yeah. for your dot orgs? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I sold uh, like top of my head. I sold collab.org for 60 G's last year. OK. Uh, uh, I had another good five figure sale. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head last year. I had another good dot org sale as well. Um, yeah, man, I just, and I've heard of, I've heard of a bunch of other ones. You remember Yanni came on, he talked about a, a, a .org for like 
six figures. That, mm-hmm. that was probably last year. And I've seen some others out there privately reported. Um, and I just like them, dude. I think that, I think that, you know, if someone said I paid 10 G's for legend.io, that would have been, everyone would be like, yeah, makes sense. And I think .org for me is in a, is in a pretty similar category, uh, to .io when it comes to retail value. Um, just less hyped. It's just less hyped. Um, so yeah, I heard, uh, I tuned into the last Sherpa and I think zeus.org is coming up on mm-hmm. jet so and based yeah, on what that. drew and some of the other guys said they would like to own that name at i feel pretty confident that that one might be coming into my portfolio soon as well <laughs> very cool good stuff man all right well that's what's up all right and then shane's got the point so uh so that's where we're at in the domain game so good stuff and congratulations on the buy all right Braden, what about you you got a buy or a sell um I was I just had a sale, but I can't talk about it unfortunately. Um, okay, Tell but uh, biggest sale in the history of domaining. Was it a nice one, Brandon? <laughs> was it a nice one? <laughs> it was a sale. You know, you know I'm just I'm doing a- the you know it's the 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 Miller you know we, that's what we call it the Miller where you come on I just did the biggest sale. Ever, but I can't tell no, you. No, it, it was it was not a it was not a big sale, and it was a one week hold. So, Woo, oh. all right, I love that. I love that journey for you. All right, well then, talk to us about a name that but, you can actually talk about. All right, so I was gonna I was gonna say um, I was gonna do a buy. I was gonna do one to throw you guys off affiliate leads dot com because that's that's a tough one unless you're in the space. But uh, I'll let you guys choose. We can do affiliate leads dot com or. I just bought a .org. I just bought spinach.org. Oh, well, let's talk oh, about that. I, 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 I own spinach.com. So I didn't. Okay. We did it on our list, but I don't think I looked at the final. So, oh, so which you one are you talking the, about? Affiliate leads or spinach? I'd like to talk about spinach because it's like. Yeah, let's keep know. the org going. Yeah, yeah let's, let's keep it. Let's, it's an orgy. <laughs> No, okay, it's bad. Um, all right, let me go ahead and <laughs> or he, well, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, just say, hey, just just keeping it moving, man. It's a vibe. Um, all right, so spinach dot org, and you got spinach dot com. So, all right, I think. Uh, all right, I've got my number. Let me know, Josh. You got to get your phone. Okay, sorry. All right, all right. Yeah, man. You like Googling it? What, you looking it up? Uh, sorry, spinach.org. Spinach.org. Yeah, welcome to <laughs> Domain Show. It was a purchase. All roads lead to, all all right. roads lead to domains. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right, flip your phones and then try to get it to where. Oh, wow. wow. All right, we tight. So Josh is at 1700 Shane is at 2350 and I'm at 2499 So we all are right. like not a lot of space here. All right. No. All right. But uh, the undertook it, Josh. Oh, Josh. Yeah. Oh, snap. All right. Well, um, well I paid $1,025. Oh, very nice. nice. All right. Yeah. I like it. But, so, it ain't no legend. You... <laughs> no, I, only re- I only remember it because I said Popeye would like this name. And I don't think my, I think 90% of my audience don't even know Popeye and that he eats spinach anymore. Like, right. I oh <laughs> man, is that where we are in life? You know, you talk about, we spent yeah. a bunch of time early on talking about getting old and all that. Um, I just went, so Josh, Popeye was a cartoon character. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Popeye. Popeye <laughs> the sailor man. man. Yeah, it's Popeye go. the sailor man, man. He had the olive, olive oil. Uh, I was talking to a, a guy from Mexico and I said, uh, Fred Flintstone. He goes, what? And he goes, oh, Pico Piedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. I go, that's what they call me. Go, oh, yeah, it's Pico Piedro. It is Pico uh, Piedro. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Fred Flintstone. So I'm sure Popeye has some foreign language. I'm sure he was yeah. Popeye in the UK, though. Just and then blue his boy Bluto with but he was all about hamburgers. Yeah, olive you know? oil, sexy, sexy. Yeah, olive and then Bluto Bluto's thing was he was buying hamburgers on credit. You know, like I'll you know give me a no. That's not hamburger. Bluto. That was um, 
gladly pay you Tuesday for a hey, hamburger, for a hamburger today. today. Yeah, that's not Bluto. Bluto was a, was the bad guy. Was he um, the, oh, he was the bad guy. So who was the ham? He wasn't the hamburger. What was who's the no, hamburger? No, no, no. <laughs> the hamburger was McDonald's. Man, you're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I got range. I got a wide range. Wimpy, out here. wimpy, wimp- wimpy. All right, wimpy, wimpy. wimpy man. Was gladly, like. He was yeah, a he's buy basically now, trying to eat on credit, man. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to run up a tab, you know? Yeah, you can't um, say that anymore. No. You can't say right. gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Not Only your grandfather would understand what the hell you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So spinach.org, you've got the .com, so it makes sense. Where did you buy it? Like, did you see it posted on a marketplace, or what was the uh, process? Oh, it's GoDaddy, I think, right? GoDaddy. Yeah. Nice. It was, it was, it was a slide option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, expired oh, auction. Cool. Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, you know, I, I tried talk- to I tried to buy that before and uh I didn't I didn't get anywhere. I don't know what happened. I probably couldn't get a hold of the guy. But uh it ended up expiring. So yeah, for yeah me. Well, we, you've talked a lot on the show about how you know you like to complement your dot coms, especially the good ones with you know some of the alternate extensions and use that in other ways of like, hey, you can't afford the dot com, here's this one or you know, hey, you know, if yeah, you yeah. Com, so, you throw in the non com. So, you know, most most of the inquiries, you know, they can't afford a high six figure or seven figure name. And so I can give an alternative at like, you know, three to five percent, right? Um and then hopefully they'll come back when they when they make some money and they can afford to upgrade. Um, the other thing is if if we're stuck on negotiation, I can't get them over the line. Then, uh, then I can use that as a value add, right? I can add it in as a package. The other thing is I can upsell. So they buy the .com and then I could kick in the .net, a .org or whatever for another, you know, whatever, 20 grand, mm-hmm. 50 grand, depending on the price point um, of the .com. Um, so all of those things are are options and that's, and that's why I like it. Um, yeah. As oh, well, so sometimes they just want they want to secure the whole brand. So if I've got a comnet or guyo, I've got the whole package, um, then it blocks out their competition, and so I think it raises the value of of the dot com by being able to secure that brand. Yep, no, that makes sense. Well, good stuff. Congratulations to you too as well. Um, all right, Shane, what about you, man? What do you got? A buy, a sell? I, something? I got. A, I really have nothing. I w- I will say this on on Josh and and actually Raiden. I, I'm a huge dot org fan. I just I usually down, I don't say anything. Like I haven't said I'm buying it at all until these guys. Just because I don't I don't want anybody to know. But it sounds like other people have the same thing. But I'm talking to businesses now. You know, dot xyz's. <laughs> despite what some people say, it's, it's one of the first things they go to. They're, they're actually looking at a .com out of my price range. They go immediately to .xyz. And, and now they're thinking org. Like that's the first time in the last couple of years that .org is on the table. As long as it's a solid single word, no plural, like it's, it's legitimately in the thought process, which made me start thinking maybe I need to start adding some solid .orgs to my Especially in crypto, crypto has no problem with .org. They love .org, yeah. so that's that's a good thing. But um, yeah, and I'm also just not doing buys. Like Elliot's kind of convincing me uh, as far as talking about it. Elliot's convincing me it's not always in my best interest to say my buys on Domain Sherpa because okay. it's only the second time I've done it. Yeah, it's come back to haunt me two or three times in negotiations. Yeah. Like I watched Domain Sherpa because it came up in a Google search, and so I have been. I have made a couple of buys, but I'm going to, I'm going to do something else that I thought was j- just because I think people can learn from it is I was in an auction and I got beat out and maybe you two were in it, but it was the domain up only.com up only, which is hey, uh, okay. talking about that. That's actually a good point. JT. Is there, is there any way that you can like <laughs> not put the domain on buys in, <laughs> in, the, in the title of your, <laughs> um, you know, so, that's a good question. Um, you know, maybe it might make more sense going forward in the titles to put the titles of maybe the name jet names or something that we review, right? Because, you know, I think what I can do, um, so we're doing a refresh on the, the, the domain Sherpa website. Um, actually talking with our boy, Sean Markey. So, you know, when I have the conversation with him, I'll, I'm going to talk to him about, I'm going to put it on the, the, the agenda to see from a tight, cause we're, we're looking at everything from titles, thumbnails, like, you know, all that kind of stuff to just figure out like, Hey, we want to be best practices and really just make sure we've got our shit together as we're continuing to just do what we do. 
Um, and uh, I will ask the question about the titles of the shows because I've also thought the same thing, and it's just, you know, it just puts it into the mix and into the universe in a way where I don't know, and I don't know if people are clicking, anyone's actually clicking based on the domains that are being listed, right? So it's like, you know, and, and every show, what I've done since I've taken this over is, for the most part, it's like if it's a domain short review, it's a domain short review, and we give the show a title, and then we mention the domains in the title, but we probably don't need to do that because, again, I don't think people are specifically seeking out. And then what ends up happening is, is people hear the history. And like you said, it could be, you know. Yeah. And the only reason why, and the only reason why it becomes an issue, right, is because if, I, if, if a bias is coming along and says, I want to buy legend.org or whatever. Sure. And you're saying they, I want 75 just, and they're know, like, yo, you bought never, it for 10. Yeah, yeah. They're never. Well, and they're never going to they're never going to find they're never going to listen to this and find out but what they are going to do is they're going to type it into google right and and it's going to be one of the only things that comes up and then they're going to listen to it right yeah, so yeah. it's just it's just uh they might be listening anyway just because you know so many people listen to the show i right? mean and if they and if you are I'll listening just, you know and if you are listening you know take that because you're not getting it for that to 10k <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well you're right like look man i mean you're taking the 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 risk of putting that much money up now to you know secure the domain and the rights to the domain so you know you've got to be compensated for that risk i mean and, and we talk about that all the time you know and that's you know where that's why you're looking well, for it's all we have to go off right so when we're negotiating a domain price the the human nature is to try and find something to start with right so if somebody says i have something for sale comps are just a natural thing and if you if you know what they paid for it then that's what you're starting your basis yeah. off if you have nothing then it makes it much more difficult and it opens it up so that's i mean that's why and we want to contribute to our audience we want to contribute to the show but the reality is if it costs us 10 grand to to help the show there's maybe we can come up with a way <laughs> oh, and i get you and it's not like the show's getting the benefit either of it it's you know it's like all it is it's it's helping out potentially the new buyer um, yeah. and it's not even really helping our audience either. So I think it's a fair well, point. Well, it's good I'll, to know what we pay. I think it's really good to know. I, I, I think, think, I think it comp. is useful as well. It is useful. I think that's an, it's a useful part of it, but if you just kept buys out of the titles, that would solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Make them work. Actually, actually, I actually paid a hundred grand for it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which means Shane won with his original $85,000 guest. Well, no, but the, and that's um, the thing is if, if we start using your AI to go through the show, I'm going to say shit just to have the AI pick it up and put it in the in the text form so that it kind of mixes up everything. So, I mean, and that's legit, too, because we talked about for SEO, you want a transcript of this show, right? And AI is going to scrub that transcript and pick up domain names and information. People use that. I'm going to talk for 20 minutes on nothing that's lies so that it gets picked up and then throws them off a little bit. <laughs> All right, hey man, I like it. Well, so yeah, a couple of things. Um, one, I will see what the deal is. Cause you know, when we go live with the new site and the refresh, like everything will be ported over. So we'll be able to see what we can do with the titles. And again, I think it's about maximizing the titles and the, the impact of the titles and then separately making sure that we're not doing something in the process that's detrimental to our guests or to our audience. Right. So, um, yeah. I think all that makes sense and, uh, you know, we'll definitely, we'll see what's up. And if anybody has some feedback and they want to hit us on Twitter, they want to hit us on the, the, the comments or of the show, um, you know, shoot us an email. Like if you've got thoughts again, we've got our boy Sean in the mix. And, uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. The, the, all the mock-ups Jen's been doing a fantastic job with putting a bunch of that stuff together and, uh, doing some really, really cool stuff there. On another note, similar note, we've got the new media option site live. So definitely check that out as well. Get to mediaoptions.com and check out the brand new site there. Um, which as we air this show, which is actually going to air tomorrow, the day after we're taping, um, you know, we're going to show some uh, kind of before and after and do some cool stuff on social so people can see what that evolution looks like as well. And, you know, a lot of work that has gone into that and the SEO for that site. And, uh, you know, it's already having some pretty good positive impact in the search results and things. So, you know, just constant improvement, just trying to always do do better, you know, so uh, so all good. But um, all right, well, then let's do this. So let's talk about up only. Are you guys meaning Josh and Braden? Were you guys yeah, in that I mean, auction at all or familiar with what what that went for? Mm -mm. All right. Well, then I, let's, saw, but I have no idea. So it was a purchase. And well, it wasn't a purchase. It was an almost purchase. I got beat on the last bit. Well, it was a purchase I, for somebody. Yeah, it was definitely a purchase for somebody. And, I, and we I think 
Yeah, I don't know. I, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's see what, and you know what the final, the final yeah. price was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got beat up by $20. So I know. Or $100. Oh, oh man. All right. Okay. So here we go. Um, wait, wait, wait. All right. Let me know when, when uh, Josh and Brayden, you've got your. Uh... Oh, oh, sorry. I was distracted. Uh, okay. So uh, up only. Dot com. Up only. Up only dot com. Only weird name. She what it sell for? Um, too much. Well, it's not weird necessarily. You know, it's very. And it's a raw domain. Crypto. It's no backlinks. It's raw. Like there's no. Don't help them out too much, man. We can. Just well, I mean, I don't want to say it's seventy two thousand. It used to be a website for gambling. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a casino. All right, you ready, Braden? All right, flip it. What do you got? Oh, oh wow! Look Ooh. at this. Look at close to Braden. The pin. Braden's at thirty five hundred. Josh is at four thousand and one dollars. I'm at four thousand nineteen dollars because my guess is Shane's <laughs> top bid was three nine nine nine, and then he got him <laughs> over him by twenty bucks. I got the under. <laughs> no, like, you guys are all right in the money. You know your domains. Thirty three fifty was the oh, final 33, price. So is that Braden? Yep. No, oh, all right. So yeah. all right. Well, very cool. Well, you know. So talk about up only and why you were interested. Yeah, I mean, in it. it's a it's a a web three trading that's kind of a, a the running joke is things up only like it only goes up the oh, chart where it just goes oh. straight up yeah so it's it's obviously not true but the way people trade you think uh in nfts things will never go down or stocks will never go down uh speaking of which i'm watching tesla's earnings coming off here in 30 minutes we're going to find out if things go down or not but um yeah so i i just like the name i thought it represented uh trading and and stocks and financials really well. And evidently somebody thought just a little more. Actually, I put in my bids and go play. So it happens to me literally every day. I'm like 99% of my auctions is I put in my bids and somebody's beat me by the next bid almost every day. I, I hardly ever Same. get I, I rarely, I rarely, unless I really want it, I rarely get a name. I put in what I think it's worth and then I get beat up. Yeah. So yeah. And it doesn't matter what it is. Like, I think it's worth 2200 and I'll put in 3700 and it'll still be 3850 It just, it doesn't matter. Like, and, and let's talk about that. Can we talk about this before we get the domain game? It, this is going on at GoDaddy and I posted it several times and it's a huge, huge, huge problem. And what happens is, is they're coming and it, it's a lot of different names, but it's very frequent on uh, letter, number, number and number, letter, letter, where the minute it comes up for an expired auction, someone comes in and bids it up to 22,000, 50,000, way above what anybody would pay. And then at uh, and then the, then he he or she doesn't pay. And so GoDaddy's policy is to give it to the next person. So removing that person's bids, which happens to take you all the way down to $20 or $50 because they started it and moved it up so quick that nobody else was able to get in that. So there, and this is happening all the time and they're awarding domains for a hundred dollars for domains that are worth thousands of dollars. And it's, it's gotten bad. It's gotten really bad. Well, Square so X. yeah, so I've, I've got a couple right of questions now. about this. I saw the, I saw the, you know, some of this chatter online and, um, don't they validate their bidders? Like what happens if you, so you can, you know, like how do you create, if you create you just an, set account. Up an account, you can just set up an account. It's it's easy. And then, and then, so that person just burns that account, but yeah, big deal. Yeah. And it's, um, five dollar options membership. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's your member. That's, that's the accreditation accreditation. And, and here's how I first noticed it is my commissions at, at DSAD were, crushing it right i mean there some of those guys or girls i don't know who it is People. definitely came through my site because we were getting some commissions uh that were uh, extraordinary and then they just started disappearing a lot like i pretty much knew that every commission we got over 500 dollars was going to be revoked by the end of the month and i wrote my account rep and said what is going on here like we're talking five ten thousand dollars a month just coming and going and coming and going and and, and Turns out, I think that's what it was. I think that they're just, I'm getting paid for something and it, then they don't pay and then I don't get the money. Now, I'm not positive of that. I don't, that part I don't want to accuse, 
but the running up at the auction, I don't, I can't accuse. It's very obvious. I put one up today, D66 or yesterday, and you can see it. It's up to like 20,000 and they started at 12 and two bids just to get to the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got to change. It's, I mean, it's just got to change. It's, it really should just, it should get re auctioned. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, just start it over. Yeah, well, because I mean, there just, are people. It's not just those names as well. Like, there was one the other day that I mentioned on Twitter, squarex.com. Uh, it was bid, bid up by the same bidders from basically the day that it was listed from $100 all the way up to 11500 two bidders. And they bid it up from $100 to 11500 in yeah. four minutes. Yeah, and they're of, and they're and bidding like, it up to a point that nobody else is going to buy it. That's like the whole point is to get it above a level that anybody intelligent would never touch it. Yep. Yeah, but uh, it, and then they'll get offered it for a hundred dollars, and and that's an absolute steal, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's interesting. I mean, the way that we used to do it at Namejet, it would, it would automatically re-auction, and you know, I know that was one of the things. Now we would also, you know, in order to bid over a certain amount, you'd have to be verified, which would be a whole process yeah. for sending in identification and all that kind of stuff, and you know, to be even able to participate above like twenty five hundred bucks, like total collectively, right? So it didn't mean like, so until you were verified, you couldn't, and even creating an account was a process, but then it was like to then be, you know, able to collectively bid up to 200, you know, beyond 2499 or whatever it was in the auctions, you needed to have a verified account. And then obviously anybody that would, um, you know, default on an auction would get blacklisted from the platform. And then for them to have to get, you know, come back on and re-verify, you know, we would, you know, do our best to not allow that, right. And catch them in our fraud checks and all that kind of stuff. The, um, and then we'd re-auction the domains, which, you know, we would always find in re-auctioning them, they would never go up as high as they did the first time around because it led, shit. led to a tainted sort of experience. Plus you're taking out the highest bidder out of the auction at that point, but at least it allows it. And I would think for GoDaddy's you know, for them, if these are expiring domains, you know, they would much rather them sell. Like if you're talking about a name that sells for a hundred bucks when it should have sold for 2000 and it got bid up to 8,000. Right. So then instead of getting $2,000, they're only getting a hundred dollars. Like that sucks for them too. I would, I'm Yeah. I know it's costing them six figures. There's no doubt in my mind that they're, they've lost at least six figures in, in profit. You know, I have a thought. Do they have time to re-auction it? That's a good point, too. They do. I mean, well, usually what happens is from a renewal standpoint on the expiry side, like once the name goes into auction, like, well, and I don't, you know, it's, it's funny. I haven't really looked to see the logistics. It depends sort of if, it's, uh, if it's uh, a syndicated, it came, it came, it's a, what do you call that? When it comes from another registrar, mm-hmm. a partner registrar, um, you know, there's a different time period if it comes from them versus what yeah, GoDaddy. Typically, well, and again, I don't know, you know, I'm not super familiar with the way that GoDaddy's exact process works, but usually the names, like once they would go to auction, like, cause for, for Namejet, for example, like once you had at least somebody buying it for 69 bucks, you know, it would automatically renew as part of going to auction as the process, which then gave you more time if you needed to for running a follow-up, like, you know, re-auction. Um, because at that point you're like, okay, well, we know we're going to get at least enough to cover the, you know, the, the renewal fee. So we're not losing money by, you know, allowing this one to continue through. So that was typically how it would go. So, you know, it's not that it would necessarily butt up against the, you know, renewal grace period, and then it's no longer eligible or something like that. But I don't know how they're like the technical aspects. That's, but that's possible, out. right? Cause there's hundreds of registrars. Yeah, 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 and each one's a, could be a little bit different, you know, depending on timing and what days it comes to into the stream, and you know, and, and exactly how that all shakes out, and how long they're giving their customers to renew those domains in advance of going to auction, and then what the process actually is, and what the timing looks like. So, yeah, well, I think it's definitely an issue, and it's you know, it's the kind of thing where if people are gaming the system, you know, there there's a lot of smart folks over there, and there's a lot of money at stake. So hopefully they they figured yeah, it out. Has there been any feedback from Paul or anybody? I mean, usually he's pretty him, Joe. I mean, those guys are all pretty active. It's pretty, pretty new, and, and Paul's Paul's pretty quiet about how he's. They don't announce anything until they announce something. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. not he's not. They're not going to give feedback other than we're aware. Like I expect the next announcement is we're aware of the situation. And we're working on it and da da da. Again, yeah. great team. Like uh, I've said this a million times. The the people at GoDaddy that we know are are, are all really nice people, super helpful, take care of things on the spot. I, I I can't say enough about the team over there. Paul and his team do an amazing job. They have issues. I mean, that's 
plain and simple and they've got to take care of them, but it, it's not only affecting them, it's affecting everybody. Like I can't bid on a name because I'm not going to pay 12,000 for it, but I might've paid 1200 or 1500 or 2000, mm-hmm. but they've taken essentially five or 10 names a day out of my, you can see it. Just go look at the top names. Crazy. I can, yeah. I can, I can look at almost every name and tell you whether there's only two bidders on it. And, huh. and so but yeah, that's pretty it, wild. So yeah, well, hopefully they get it figured out sooner. Than pretty later. smart though. Like I wish I would have figured it out before everybody well, else. I just <laughs> am pretty shocked that it's like that it's come to a head now after all this time that it wasn't something that was sort of figured out, you know, but you know, we used to deal with a lot of folks trying a lot of different types of bullshit. Like, yeah. you know, we had all sorts of fraud and different, you know, filters and things that, you know, running all sorts of reports on a daily basis to just try to make sure that people were not, you know, doing shit that they shouldn't do. And, you know, bidding up auctions and doing other types of things. And like, you know, kind of similar to what you're saying, which is, I don't think we ever dealt with that particular issue with the two bidders bidding up one name in order to buy it. Yeah. But setting up an account, it wasn't an automated, Yeah, but I guess they could have done the same thing if you had, you know, and then once you get blackballed, like that would be pretty disruptive, you know what I mean? But it's, um, yeah. Well, and then, you know, you're dealing with fraud with stolen credit cards and, you know, there's definitely a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and you're using third party vendors on some of your security checks. So I'm sure they've got a lot of that stuff, you know, in the works. Um, they'll just need to kind of tighten up some of that, how, you know, what they do in the event that they get somebody that, you know, defaults and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, man. All right. Well, more to follow. We shall see. You know, another thing you talk about kind of current events or current hot topics um, Shane, you brought up something before about dot XYZs that I thought was interesting where you said that, you know, a lot of these crypto companies, you know, XYZ is kind of, is a go-to for them for, for more than dot IOs even like, yeah, I switched. And, and again, this is just my, you know, somebody it's told me, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Don't let, don't let your personal data get put in the, in the, uh, don't let your personal information get put in the data set. But I talk every day to three or four people and we discuss branding and things like that and yeah dot xyz is a top three for every single person and and in some cases is moved in front of dot io um and they're not afraid to pay the like when i tell them that's a 795 dollars renewal fee they're like that's i don't care if i can't pay 795 i don't really need to be in business kind of thing so that, yeah, that, you know? and that's a fair point, right? I mean, that's prohibitive for a domain investor, but for an actual business owner and end user, yeah. right? And if they're saying, hey, instead all. of spending $700,000 on the .com, the one word .com, I can get the .xyz for seven grand and I can pay a $700 annual renewal, then, yeah. you know, it's a much, you know, hey, happy happy to pay that, right? If they're Most of the .com, and again, these are generalizations, everybody knows this. But generally, they're coming back to the dot com. There's not a lot of people launching with a million dollar no domain. They're, they're just not that that money yet. But so they're they're starting on other names, and they're pretty open. Like a lot of the decentralized finance people I'm talking to have no problem with Fi. Like dot Fi is fine for them. It defines who they are. It's short. If they can get a one word dot Fi, it's no problem for that as as well. So it's pretty open. Like the the space. Is, I mean, you're seeing lesser quality businesses on WTF. You're just seeing people feel comfortable that they can brand anything in that bar that's memorable, as long as it's memorable. And, and one words are memorable. And you're just, I think, I think we're seeing a broadening horizon. It's difficult from an investor because that pool of available domains becomes huge. But keywords are coming back into a but the keywords are coming back, and that's that includes alternate TLDs. So they're really like legend. You know, legends an incredible keyword. Obviously, you're going to start with .com, then your XYZ, .io, .org is a really good one. But they're going to go a little deeper. And what that deeper is, we don't know exactly what it is. But I can tell you what I'm hearing and what's moving forward and what's kind of coming into the top ten. And so there's opportunity for for smaller domainers to take a chance. And it is a chance. We're talking from 10x that you and I like to get. You're going to have to get 20x and 30x when you go that deep in the TLDs. But there is opportunity there. And it's interesting to hear how, you know, when the young, I say the younger generation, but the the newer generations, they're just accepting they can't afford the big domain and they're trying to find other things they can brand. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And, uh, you know, because there's been a lot of chatter about XYZ and, you know, people make a whole bunch of allegations about different stuff. Um, And uh, people... You know, again, it's to me, it's meaningless to get caught up in it, but but it is 
you know, people are paying good money for good words and, and dot X, Y, Z is, is part of that. There, I have no doubt about it, but I also could tell you a lot of dot coms that weren't real sales dot clubs to me, a little shady on what was going on behind the scenes. Don't believe all the sales you hear. It doesn't matter what the ending is. Not everything is true, but what you have to, to hope is that the majority of them are, are real and that you've got decent information, but we all know how things work. Like, Marketing, a sale of a domain name is a very good marketing tool and putting a big number on it's even better. So if you and I can agree and I pay you less, but we agree that I paid more other than the tax man, it's good for marketing to say things like that. I get that part too, but there's also uh, undoubtedly some dot XYZs that are selling very, very well. The funny thing is, you know, you say that, that, you know, don't believe all the sales, but, but the fact is that most of the sales are not reported at all. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, exactly. it's like, you know, we really do have very limited information as far as whether or not some of these sales are legitimate. But I think getting some anecdotal, you know, insight into the fact that there are companies out there that are, you know, really willing to. And uh, and there's a look, non-coms have always been a thing. There's always been, you know, different ones that are more popular at different times based on different things. Uh, different extensions. I think some have kind of continued to withstand the test of time. I think, you know, XYZs have always been a bit polarizing, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, it's interesting, man. It's And it's cool to hear that people are actually, you know, that that is an option. And because look, companies need to have, uh, you know, they need runways, right? They need to have launching pads and places to start to then move up towards, you know, the, uh, you know, sort of the prime real estate of the dot com domain. And obviously one word dot coms have become very, very expensive. And for a lot of these companies are, that are just starting out, you know, um, another thing though, talking about GoDaddy is they just announced the lease to own option that is now an option via after Nick, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, have you guys to, you know, so, which I think is another option in a way for, you know, folks to get into the dot com or, or a domain that would otherwise be outside of their, uh, you know, their budget. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I think it's, 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 it's interesting stuff to hear from our man on the street, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, what do you guys think about the least to own thing at after Nick? I mean, it's already existed forever on. Yeah. I mean, it, we, we call it Dan before, so yeah, exactly. It's nothing. It's also a taste testing platform. Like, I mean, now you put the word least to own because now they can just walk away from their lease and, and leave you with it, which they could always do, but I used to I used to view it as a payment plan, right? Like they intended on owning it and they were just going to spread it out. It's kind of changing a little bit. Now people are saying, hey, I can spread it out. Hey, what do you want to give me? Give me five years. I'm going to just try it out. And if I decide I don't want it, I'll just give it back to you and I eat a little money. So it's kind of changed. And I think that's, wouldn't you agree be, too? I won't be putting my, my names. I wouldn't be opting in for payment plans for my after nicknames. Yeah. No. I do it for names that I do it for names that I would that I don't know that I would have sold for that much, right? Like I just I price them higher and and keep that price if I'm going to do payment plans. And I've had 100 percent success. I I do have uh, I've always had payment plans, but I do them direct. And the the problem I have with the platforms is they take such a big piece of the like they take most of the interest. So it's like you, you want me to sell at this price, but then I'm I'm the one financing it, but you know you you take all the interest. It, it like <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, uh, I also have a have a theory, and I don't have proof about these theories, but my I I like to think that generally my my theories or hypotheses or whatever are, are pretty accurate, and I think that people that go to a landing page are not the same type of buyer that buys through um, the registration path. Uh, I think the people that buy through a registration path are more likely to just hit the bin. There's a little bit more impulse to it um, compared to the person that goes to the landing page. And maybe that payment plan just is something that they've thought about longer and helps, you know, it helps them get over the line while I don't want to offer a payment plan to someone who was going through the reg path and was just like, I want to own this name right now because I've got this idea in my head and I'm going to check out on a credit card and I'm willing to pay five grand for it. But hold on a minute. 
I can actually just pay 150 bucks for it right now. Nice. I'll just take it for 150 bucks. Boom. They give it back the, the, you know, a month or two months later. And because they're not going to do whatever they thought they were going to do. And you only get 150 bucks when, you know, in a lot of cases, I think you would have got the full five grand. So that's why. why You know, I've done like a bunch of financing and leasing and, um, I'd have to go back and look to get some data, like what percentage actually goes through. I've certainly had a lot fall out. I mean, I've had I've had names fall out where I've gotten you know mid five figures, and um, you know then they don't make any more payments. Or or I got one, I got ten percent. I got a four, I had a four hundred thousand dollars sale, forty thousand down. He didn't make any more payments um, because he decided to go a different direction. Um, but I've got leases that have been going on for years to just. You know, and they're they're not much. They're like three or four hundred bucks a month, but there's there's it's a pure lease, so there's no equity at all. So he's just got to keep paying forever. Um, yeah. A couple of those, those I love those because if he ever wants to buy it out, well, what's fair market value now? You know, it's yeah, different so than we do then. a lot of our leases. We don't do it based on some kind of a fair market type of payment. It's just an established whatever the the payment is at the end, you know, and then the lease payments are basically an option to purchase. Um, and you know, an option to you, it's a more like a license with an option to purchase. Right. And, um, you know, I think that it's interesting. I think for the lower value domains, it sounds like it maybe doesn't make a ton of sense. Cause like you said, a name that's five, six grand, like if a business is going, you know, if they can't put that up and they're willing to put up $200 is just on a flyer. And then, you know, you get, you know, but I do like the idea of making some money, you know, off of a name that then you still own when the dust settles. Now, there's opportunity costs and other things, right? So especially if it's a name that's, you know, sort of more flavor of the moment, you know, and it's the kind of thing where the value is, no, you know, most cases, one word dot coms and other premium domains are appreciating over time, right? Um, you know, there are a few things when you talk about AI, NFTs, shit like that, that, you know, have, you know, kind of ebbs and flows to them where it's like a name might have a certain value now and are not actually going to be as valuable when that moment passes if they don't catch it and really build the business that they want to build and do what they want to do. So it's like, okay, great. You know, I could have sold it to party. You know, I sold it to you on a lease for a hundred thousand. I could have sold it over here to somebody who was willing to do a buy it now for 80 grand. I got paid ten thousand dollars before your business didn't work out. So now it's like, you know, I guess it kind of now, but now the name's worth forty thousand, and it's like, all right, well, you know, but those are all business decisions that everybody's got to make as part of the process. You know, I think it's, you know, it's helpful when the platforms that we utilize have the functionality, so at least then you could choose whether or not you want to use it, right? At least it gives you as a customer, uh, in your own right, an opportunity to take advantage of it or not, right? So. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I think it was maybe Elliot was talking a little bit about, you know, some of the least owned stuff and saying how, you know, cataloging a few of them that, you know, hadn't fully paid over time, just how much he had made on some of those names just by effectively renting them in the meantime. And, uh, you know, but, you know, I think if you can, it's like owning, it's this digital real estate, it's like owning apartments. If you've got people buying or uh, people renting them, you know, and you've got a decent amount of money coming in every month, that's pretty cool too. So, um. Yeah. So. All right. Well. Cool. All right. Well. Look. We are at a three-way tie of the domain game. So, and we got to finish this and move on to name jack and a jet, and we'll probably move through that section pretty quick. Um. So let me do this to get us to a winner. So I'm going to pick a name off of a recent name jet sale. Um. You guys tell me if anyone participated, and if anyone has, I'll just keep moving down the list. I got plenty, so it's no big deal. Um. But we'll take a name that we talked about previously on the show. Um, and I'm going to go with, let's go. We talked about this earlier about being able to kind of work remote and all that stuff. Let's go with telecommuting.com. Were, were any of y'all in that auction for telecommuting.com? Josh? No. Nope. All right. Telecommuting.com. You guys all post up. Give me a, without looking at any data, don't look at name bio, any of that kind of stuff. Just put it on the phone and put it up on the screen and, uh, let's see what's good. Get ready to flip and let me see what's up. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh, I don't 
don't know. I think that might, I think that might be high. Well, this was a buy on Namejet, um, not by me, but by somebody. All right. Billy filling right. the time with a little something, something. All right, go ahead. Flip them and let's see what's good. Oh. Telecommuting.com. I did say telecommuting.com, right, Shane? Yeah. All right, so care. the numbers for those of you who are only listening and not watching, Shane's at 800, 850 bucks. Uh, Josh is at 4200 and Braden is at 6500 And the winner is... It's Braden. Yo, the name actually sold on Namejet for $11,055. Telecommunities. So they, are, they, are they going to work on a telephone? Like, I hate that term. Like, it doesn't make <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you know, when you think about remote work, like telecommuting is probably, you know, getting pretty far outside of the, you know, sort of useful terms that are like really. That no, anymore. We, we no, say there's no, there, unless there's backlinks on there, that's a horrible brand. It makes no sense. Nobody's like, it's, it's a terrible name. You know, you know, I, I picked 6,500 and I was like, it's going to be more than this. And I was, almost changed it and I was like, nah. Okay. But I, I, I just I felt like it sold for more. People, are- I knew, I knew, just because it's a one word dot com and it's probably registered in like ninety four because it's a freaking old person's term. I was like, dude, this fucking thing sold for way too much. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I was, I was going with value, not what it sold with. Like I had to, I, I had to prove a point. Like I, I'm, that's, it's a horrible domain. Like that's, if you're you telling somebody Graydon. to build a brand, you work, Graydon. yeah, you win. All right. Well, telecommuting.com and Braden is the winner. All right. So cool. No, the winner so- is Namejet. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. That is a great that point. Namejet um, is the winner there. The buyer, no offense to that buyer. Enjoy that name. So, um, as you I hope you, I hope he enjoys it because he's going to have it a long time. <laughs> he's going to a long time. Well, he's going to write that shit off his taxes and sell it for 12 bucks. Nope. I mean, you know, maybe, 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 maybe. I think that, uh, but I think that's an interesting point. And um, let's see, this is the order. History. That's going to be my new platform where I just, you'll just send me your shit names. I'll give you $3 for it. And then you can write it off your taxes. There you like, go. Then what like are you going to do? <laughs> uh, I'll sell it for $1 and write thousands of names off my tag. No, but, but you're going to get it right at expiration. <laughs> That's right. true. That's true. I'll get, I'll get funding. I'm, I'll write it some kind of. This is an yeah. excellent plan you've got. I yeah, like I'm going to scale it too. I can already tell I'll be able to scale. I right. I'm going to get VC it. funding for it. It'll scale. It reminds me of that that uh, old uh, Saturday Night Live skit that was like, the, the, it's the, the, the change company. You know, you give us a dollar, we'll give you four okay. quarters or yeah. two quarters. How can I, five how can I renounce, or can I ownership of how can I renounce ownership of like hundreds and hundreds of trash NFTs without transferring them? No, so that's uh, that's why that's where I stole the idea from. There is actually a, a site that will give you 0.001 ETH, like okay. minimal ETH, and you just send them that, and then they'll send you that, and for taxes. You can write it all off, so you, it's yeah, not a burn. I still, got, I still got to pay the gas fee to send it to the all yeah, of them. That's a, that's a good that's point. The, problem. the yeah. gas. I want. I like. I'm. Just, I'm happy to just transfer them all out to a burner wallet, but but same thing, same problem. But it's like, yeah, it's still like two hundred fifty dollars in gas. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take your good ones out and then just turn over the wallet. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Why not just right. leave them there, like the rest of us? That's yeah, true. Exactly. Media Options is the industry's leading domain broker specializing in domain acquisitions, high value domain sales, and domain name consultation. As pioneers and thought leaders on the subject of the domain aftermarket and domain name value, plus through their clear domain acquisition service, Media Options offers startups and established corporations an unparalleled scope of high value domain options, providing access to domain names and curation technologies not available elsewhere. Media Options believes in the power of a great domain name and is dedicated to helping you obtain yours call or email today to put a domain to work for you all right well let's slide in so hey the next segment name jet gonna jet you guys got the list let's uh we're running a little bit low on time yeah i was uh, gonna so say i have a hard out not too long we'll be able to get through it though 
Yeah. No, so it's all good. Um, we'll go with Braden first. So you all have the list. And uh, so, yeah, the segment Namejet Get a Jet, sponsored by Namejet. We've got the list that you can download on the uh, on the site itself, which has the domains as well as some additional information, including the Estabot appraisal. Please take with a grain of salt. Uh, but it'll have the amount of back orders as of the day that we record the show. It has the order by date. All of these are expiring domains, which means, as best I can tell, now it's the new site, but I think it's still the information is out there, and it's it's uh, I think I'm reading it right. But um, they're all expiring domains, no reserve. Uh, but you need to have your back order in by the order by date in order to be able to participate in what will be a quote unquote private auction along with some other information that's there. So if that helps, download the spreadsheet and use that to get your uh, back ordering going. And uh, yeah, so we've got 15 domains on the list, including um, the domain that I had mentioned, which is the same name, net and org. Because I wanted to, uh, you know, have a conversation around which you guys like, what you like better. Um, so, Brady, why don't you tackle the list first and uh, let me know what you think. What do you like? What don't you like? Okay, we'll I'll leave bags.net for Shane so you can talk about his bags. But, Pump your bags. You know, it's a .net. It's a, it's a legacy extension. It's not a, you know, it's not a, a current, like, high-tech NFT kind of crypto extension. That's going to be for purses. So, I'm just saying Okay. But I'll let you talk about it. Um, I like uh, I like cue cards because I'm just I just picture like electronic cue cards. You know, are, are people really like writing stuff out on cardboard anymore as opposed to holding up a tablet? Um, so I can see an app for that. Um, and then what you were talking about is forum.net and .org. I I like those names. Um, I'm bidding on both of them. Which one's better? You know, probably .org right now. Um, I mean, it could be a nonprofit or it could be, um, it could be more like a NFT crypto kind of situation with the .org. Yeah, I think for, you know, so like you said, it's forum.net and forum.org. Uh, interestingly, the Estabot appraisal has the .net worth about double what they have the .org at worth, which I think, you know, and that shows you some of the challenges when you're dealing with anything that's an algorithm trying to tell you what somebody may or may not spend on a domain that is unique. All domains are snowflakes, so it's hard to, you know, when get it, that when right. When was the about Algo last update as well? I would love to know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. 1997? Uh, look, I, the thing is you have to look at what, what the comps are. It could, be, it could be anything. It could be something that's way off. Algorithmic comps just don't work. Sure. For, for yeah, yeah, well, I, I think it's the whole idea of it's the AI stuff in general. Like there's always going to be, you know – Places that it works well, places that it doesn't. Um, and, you know, this domain valuation has always been tough. Um, but, um, but yeah, I would agree with you. I like the org better than the net. I think orgs, as a, you know, as opposed to nets in general, are a better extension. Um, do you guys, would you guys agree that if it's org versus net, just, you know, almost regardless of what it is? It depends is? on the industry. I think, I think org leads more high tech and, and net leans more legacy. It's interesting that org, which is intended to be more of a nonprofit, is really leans more tech. That's pretty interesting. And that net is feels like a relic, you know, but not in a bad way necessarily. I, I agree well, with you. Just, just like an offline kind of business. Yeah, I feel like I feel like a plumbing business. You go dot net all day. Yeah, you know, okay. that, like I agree. I'm with you, brick and mortars and, uh, you know, mom and pops. I like it. Um, and then for forum, I feel like, you know, you've got a lot of, you can do, I mean, you're talking about things like chat rooms or discussion boards or, you know, or even, uh, I like the idea of forum.org could be a, uh, uh, like an arbitration type of, uh, you know, online type of business or something that, you know, does, does some things through that. So there's a whole lot of different stuff that could so, um, but do you guys agree on the .NET versus .org for forum? Like, which one you think is a more valuable domain if you're buying one or the other? Yeah, yeah I'd I, take org all day. I agree with Brandon. I think the I think the dot the forum .NET is decent as well, though. It's definitely mm -hmm. it's definitely not like massively. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like both these names for you know non coms, and that you know that's why I put them on the list, and I thought it was a good, interesting discussion point. So cool. All right, Braden. Uh, anything else that you don't like on here, or anything else that um, you really like? Yeah. So, word of warning: discernible.com and presumptuous.com. People will be like, "Oh, one word dot coms. I'm going to go and I'm going to spend a bunch of money." You can do that. You can buy them, and then you can keep them forever. 
Like these names are that just don't really have good commercial value and no one can spell either one of them. So just just putting that out there. Not all one word dot coms are are made equal. So true. That's fair. All right, Shane, what do you think, man? What about you? What do you like? What don't you like? Yeah, I mean I like the concept of pay payment processor. I love that's, I'd love to be in that business, but I don't want that long domain. Um, Josh yeah. likes. That. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess if you're, I guess if you're tying it for SEO, it probably works pretty well. I mean, merchant services is a big boy, big boy uh, industry. It's incredible. Yeah. I'd, I'd love just, to be. He, in that. Josh is going to talk about it. I know he is. So you might as well just leave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could. I just yeah, and, and I. I I think the easiest one to sell on the uh, is probably a Yiko Y A Y I K O. You can probably uh, turn around and flip pretty easy um, as far as liquidity. But yeah, I'm not a huge. I mean, I'd probably like if I, if I could have one. If you're going to give me one, um, you want Catitude? Cut, yeah, Catitude. I get. I love Catitude, but you uh, know, I love on, we have stuff but, for Josh to talk about, but. Yeah, yeah, catitude, <laughs> man. I mean, I just uh, thought that was funny. I just but I like V I like V Studio too, Visual Studio. I think that's a, a nice name too. That's is that the one is that the one that you would take out of all of them? No, no, I will take forum. I'd actually take forum.org. I think it's just a nice, clean, like it looks like it's been around for 30 years, you know? So uh, and then but what yeah. about you, Josh? Yeah. I don't love this list, I'll be honest. I don't love it. Um Payment process, uh, you know, I I would put that name in my portfolio just because I think that I could sell it. Um, that industry is wait wait let me, let's let's break down this this strategy that you have. You would buy a name because you think you can sell it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start well, from the beginning. I I I don't I wouldn't like to passively hold that domain in my portfolio, but I think that I can, I know enough people in that industry that I could probably sell it for a profit. Um, but I don't think it's the type of name that anyone's really going to approach you for. It's the kind of name that you might be able to like do a little bit of outreach if you know people within that space and say, hey, you might be able to use this for something, and maybe they would take it for more than what you paid. But I don't love it. Um, the yeah, I yeah, I I wouldn't pay I wouldn't pay that much for it. Maybe like five hundred bucks, maybe. Uh and it will probably go more than that. I um I wanna say that I like sfco.com. Like I wanna like that name. Uh I like especially like the fact that it ends in co and I don't know, SF. The first thing that comes to mind for me is like San Francisco company dot mm-hmm. com yeah. I, I don't know like i'm sure there are lots of other things but that 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 has value that's a good four letter dot com um and i still sell four letter dot coms not as much as i would like they don't do that well in my portfolio but i do sell them and there is the trend towards that type of name like names that you look at and you think to yourself okay i'm, I'm finding some meaning in that almost immediately those do sell um I don't like steel.org just it's so against the, it's so it's so counter right, yes, exactly, to the, right, it's yeah. like the SLD and the TLD are like are like so counterintuitive that it just feels wrong yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, and then I think the the best the best name and from like a liquidity standpoint or like Shane said is is the ICO or Yiko or whatever I think that's a good name um yeah, there's something about Novator.com that I kind of like. I'm not sure why without doing any research, but I don't know. I would probably pay a few hundred bucks for that too. Okay. So V, v- Studio is obviously a good name, but it's like I'm not even going to put a back order on V Studio because I like that name, but I feel like it's just going to sell for a four four grand or like three and a half grand and and i don't like it that much guys you know 
All right. Yeah, no, look, I mean, and, and hey, you know, it's funny. I say it on the show a lot. Like when I put the list together, for some reason, I, you know, it's, a, it's a, you mentioned a heuristic earlier, Shane. You didn't call it by what it's known as, but it's the anchoring effect is the one thing where you talk about when, you, you know, we're talking about the sales being published and people finding out what you paid for a domain. You know, the anchoring is what ultimately starts to establish, like, you know, you talk about this in the sense of negotiation. It's like you put a number, you know, that starts to, you know, creates a dialogue or, or put something in somebody's head that then says, hey, that's yeah. what this is worth. Right. Um, the other yeah, Trump, um, Trump uses it through his nicknames. He anchors okay. the. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a fair point. You know what I mean? When he called uh, every time he calls him Sleepy Joe, that's a very that's I didn't know what that term is, but that's essentially what you're doing is you're trying to put something in there that start it's a starting point like and it anchors yeah. in, in in a in a thought so when you well, know in that case it's, two, a, it's you're almost anchoring an attribute right and and yeah you know, and that's one of the things i think that trump's always done i mean as a showman right or you know as, yeah. as he is you know he's very good with like you know those kinds of things the one-liner type stuff the stuff that's like the nicknames you know there's it's like a shtick of his right and uh you know but um but the one that actually applies to what i was just going to say which is the endowment effect, which is where you have possession of something and then you immediately start to attribute more value to it because you because it's yours, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We talk about it in fantasy football. Whenever you're trying to trade with somebody, everybody thinks their players are the best, even if they're not necessarily being reasonable about it. But you know, there are studies all about this stuff. With the lists, and this is my long tangent way of saying like with these lists, I don't really care. These aren't my domains. You know what I mean? So when you're like, oh, I don't think this list is very good. But there is part of me that's like, well, I did put it together, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you're hating on my list. I'm just kidding. But um, anyway, but I wanted to mention the anchoring thing earlier when you mentioned it, and this reminded me to talk about that. So, um, but uh, but yeah, but hey, look, the you know the the names are what they are, and uh, you know just based on what's coming up and what's coming, you know, down the down the pipe or pipe is it pike or pipe? Pipe pipeline pipe pipe. So it's down, down the, the pipeline, pipe, yeah. As opposed to down so. the pike. You know no, I mean? pipe. like Definitely down the pipe. turnpike or something. No. Um, anyway, they're the ones coming down the pipe, and uh, so make sure if you're interested in any of these, you know, based on what the uh, the Sherpas are talking about, make sure you get your back orders in before the order by date so you can participate. Some of these are actually going out tonight. Uh, I believe it's like 11 p.m. May have changed with the new site. I don't know. Did, that's a good question. With the new Namejet site, has that changed anything regarding timing of the back order deadline for you guys? Have you noticed any of that? Have, I haven't paid that close attention to that, but you know, the new site was kind of mirroring the Snap Name site. Did that have any impact in to process? I don't know about noticed? process. Just definitely don't like the layout. But I mean, that's just personal preference. It's a little harder for me to search, and I try not to get bogged down in the. It's different, so it's harder. Um, I just, I don't, I don't like the search search function as well. I, I've learned how to find stuff, but it's not quite as easy. Nothing, nothing changed for me because I haven't used Namejet for five years anyway. I just use Snap Names. So oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> okay. And what about you, Braden? It's harder to use. I, I mean, I like the interface better on on Namejet um, than than Snap. But I mean. I, the the new the new interface I don't I don't love but maybe because yeah. I was used to it before but, yeah again that's, yeah, but, that but we'll see it. what's coming down the pike <laughs> yeah exactly. I know now I'm gonna have to Google that and it's, see what the it's actual... pike it is pike it's not pipe it's not pipeline it's with the K, no. pike. coming down the pipe it, yeah what <laughs> you're not even you're not even from this country I don't yeah, so exactly. I don't know. in in the UK it's totally different it's actually coming down the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, well yeah that's how to be <laughs> oh yeah no it is it's pike and it's the um which is correct and it's uh yeah it's a uh, pike meaning a large road kind of like a turnpike you know so and that's Coming out of the cambridge the dictionary of american idioms so <laughs> you can just say yeah you, Braden, you're right we're all wrong just, so down yeah. the pipe dot com wait, 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 they, they, as valuable they're... as down coming down the pike dot com you know what i'm saying apparently yeah. Are you seeing that they're they are both sayings, but they mean different things? No, I think they both mean the same thing. I think the one is probably what the actual expression was based on, you know, call it, you know, established language, and the other one being more of a, you know, sort of misuse or miss, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's also popularized just because people say, you know, it's coming down the pipe, you know, because I mean, there's probably it kind of means the same thing. It's coming down the road, coming down the the the, the, the cylindrical 
vessel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Man. Like, but all I'm saying is based on the Cambridge Dictionary of American Idioms, the term is pike with a K, not pipe with a P. Although I guess it a P, but it's only one P and a K, not two P's. Mm. Yeah, the phrase all right. I think we, conflation I think with we've a covered a lot of good. I think we're, uh, we've learned we're, so much today, people. There's been a lot. It's a lot of good value. Hey, let's run through, learn. let's go around the horn real quick. I want to know what else is going on with you guys. Josh, tell us what is good with pickleball, man. What's happening? Uh, just just still working on it. Um staying healthy, playing a lot, training. Went to Denver last week. It was okay. Could have had some better results. I didn't play badly, but uh, I would say fair to say that my partners didn't have their best days. So that was kind of <laughs> straying. Um, I'm going to LA for another event in about a week and a half. Um, With a new partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two different, two different partners. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of at that stage right now where I want, I'm trying to find the best person I can find to play with, uh, which is tough um, because I'm kind, of, I'm kind of. So I'm kind of at a point where it's 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 difficult to break into what you know. I I can go in and I've played some of the top pros in the world, and I can compete and I can win rounds and. Uh, but from a consistency standpoint, it's difficult because th- a lot of these guys have been around for a few years and the best players play with the best players. So, you know, they've got established partnerships in place. So being a, and, and it's, you know, pickleball is, is most of, most of what's played is doubles. Um, so being able to find a, a good partner that you can train with and you can play with and who is, you know, capable of playing up at the highest level is is the is probably the most challenging part when are you coming to la august 1st oh so you guys gonna get it in man let's uh you know <laughs> yeah i'll be there for I a am. week so i'm I'll hit you talking about maybe doing where, a little la you, thing where you stay? fountain valley mm. like orange county yeah no it's not it's not close yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> um that's where the that's where that's where the uh that's where this place that's where the um event is yeah brain you got to go and wear your bra shirt and Mm -hmm. uh you know and represent and shit you know support your boy yeah i don't have a bra shirt because we didn't get that far but but somebody made uh, the shirt i thought no yeah dennis did dennis did but he didn't give it to me he just he didn't give it to me either i don't know why (laughs) i think he sold them when we were popular (laughs) Dennis, Dennis, wearing, Dennis lives. Wearing, does Dennis live in LA? Is he also in LA? Yeah, yeah, he's super close to me. Yeah, I he, meet you there does, with the shirts, man. It's about to be a brosh party. We're gonna get it. Let's go. I, I actually, I see him regularly. Every, you know, every few months we have a little uh, LA meetup, and uh, we just had one um, like two weeks ago. Yeah, but he, Dennis, just walks around wearing a shirt with, with our faces on it. He, he didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Big <laughs> shout out to Dennis, man. Um, so, uh, all right, well, that's what's up. So LA, we're actually talking about trying to get to some domainers together. Maybe. In LA yeah, I, I'll, I'll meet up in LA. I, I was just thinking that I've got like three or four people, um, that I'd like to see a, a friend of mine that I met Willie through NFTs, his, his girlfriend, he's like, I got to go to a hundred comic cons and I'm, I'm based in LA. And I'm like, you love, like, you like star Wars or something. He said, no, my, uh, my girlfriend is a voiceover actress. So she has to stay in the area. I'm like, anything I heard of, she's like, you know, Timmy Turner. And I'm like, from fairly odd parents like i my daughter wow. had to sit by her side and she named or he named like a hundred disney characters and like all these voiceovers that she does all those so i'm, oh, I'm gonna go crazy. meet meet those two and and uh go out there but there's a lot of people i'd love to Braden, and we'll have uh morgan come back in town down well, that area too. Amar and, and amar i'd love to see know. amar's new house if it gets finished in time yeah uh, i, don't know. I no, figured he's it, not even he's not even not, not even close i had lunch with amar last week um in vegas and he he hasn't they haven't even finished the plants i'm like how big is the house gonna be he's like well i don't know yet Uh, okay so we're We're not not gonna have bless man good luck with that whole process Uh, you know um but uh yeah Yeah, but there's uh you know jen's making you know jen's doing some traveling so you know we may try to coordinate we'll see if adam and you know if he can make a move let's see uh you know we'll see what's good but um yeah 
That's actually something we should probably get talking about. You know, all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. as you look up and see the calendar, and it's like almost yeah. August. It's like, holy crap, like where'd the summer go? I uh, know. Um, so, all right, well, cool. Um, well, Josh, man, excited to hear about how that goes. I expect Braden's going to send us all a bunch of footage from, you know, where he's sitting up in the, uh, you know, next to Kate man, Middleton with- and stuff, you know, like. Uh, so, in the last question about pickleball, and this is me not knowing. So, Singles versus doubles or doubles more popular. It seems like all the clips and yeah. stuff that I see, it's all doubles. Yeah. yeah I didn't oh, even no. actually know they played singles. Yeah. I'll play singles, doubles and mixed when I go to these events, but, uh, yeah, it's, du- it's doubles and mixed doubles that gets all the attention. Interesting. And when you go to open play, it's all doubles unless there's not enough people. And then there's, yeah. if there's like two people left, oh, okay. they, they just, they just play each other. It's, it's just all doubles. Huh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, cool. I run at like 4.30 in the morning, 4.45. And even in the like dusk, I can hear. <laughs> really? Well, I know Amar yeah. was saying, uh, you know, so Amar was do- got something going on and he's he's got playing in a tournament, I think, this week. And um, so, yeah, he's, I'd love to play like more, crazy. but I'm still running well, so. <laughs> but you can't i mean it's like 113 115 in vegas he can't play um like in the afternoon he's got to go super early to play otherwise you just well, die and, and i think we talked about it on the show too siger has got some crazy pickleball stuff that happens yeah. in danger Ridge island because that's where the original court court one as they call it is located yep. now people do yeah. the pilgrimage and they kiss the court and all that kind of stuff Today, yeah, all my way, all my friends by the way play. shout out to Siger today he's happy birthday. birthday yeah yeah oh, happy birthday Some, mike man happy you know birthday that, you know what what's up so, it's on. his birthday the day we're recording it'll be the day after happy belated on the day we actually air the show you but. have to remember it goes Braden, then Siger, and then tomorrow's my birthday no uh, way it, uh, yeah it's a, yeah is I'm that really true the, yeah i was born the day they landed on the moon so anytime you see the moon landing daddy the moon child. You. wait Braden. so it was your birthday yesterday uh no it was my birthday on saturday so, wow, so, but today, i see but it's still all pretty tight as far as you guys yeah i know it, 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 it reminds me because i have i have brayden has a birthday and then my friend locally has a birthday the day after brayden and then siger has a day before my birthday and then there's mine so i those are pretty uh, much the only four. Of the, I, I don't know when Braden's is. I just know when he has it, it triggers everything else. Like, <laughs> uh, you can't have a birthday until his birthday I happens. Yeah, well, I can't remember. Happy like, belated birthday, birthday, Braden. Braden happy too. birthday, Shane. On the day this airs, it will be your birthday. So happy birthday. Billy, give us some balloons. Give us some stuff. Give us some swag. Let's 54. do it. Also, happy birthday, Siger. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. Y'all are, aren't getting older. You're getting better. So it's all yeah. good. Um and uh all right well shane is that your update what else you got you got you got about two minutes i just got a lot of i got a lot of honey so i just i closed the store down to get all new honey i'll have uh of course the hot honey that i've got that i got it down to an art man like i spent the last week it it's awesome but i'll have blackberry honey tupelo honey wildflower honey i got i got some good honeys coming the blackberry is the only berry that actually takes on a little flavor from the berry like the rest of the honeys when they say blueberry orange it doesn't taste like the fruit it just tastes like the flower but blackberry tastes a little bit blackberry so it's really a, really it's yeah all right which so get to beehouse.com which is the one which is the which is the which is like your your favorite honey my favorite is still the fall it's like a super sweet high sugar like if you like a sweet <laughs> honey it's like it's honey, honey, but it's really sweet, and it doesn't have an aftertaste other than just like a honey taste. I thought it was so. the was it champagne or something. Champagne is like a lot of people love the champagne, but the fall is actually sweeter. It's even sweeter because it has a little bit more summer flower in it, mm-hmm. whereas the champagne is more spring. It's still all sweet, man. It's honey, like it's yeah, because that champ the champagne is good. Yeah, it's it, and the good thing is it's literally just take and it sounds like a, a TV commercial, but all I do is take it off the hive, spin it, throw it through a strainer and bottle it like nothing else going on. It's all natural. It's it's about as pure as you can get. But yeah, I like it. The blackberry I'm really excited about. It's hard to get blackberry for me. It's really East Coast and nobody wants to sell any of it. And I picked up uh, over a thousand pounds. So I'm excited. It comes on a big fucking truck. <laughs> like it's just ridiculous. I just got in, in the front of my house. I've got like buckets and buckets coming in there and like everybody in my neighborhood is wondering what the hell I got going on. Like I'm going to paint my house or something. 
No, yeah. Let me know when the Blackberry Honey's ready for order. I, I'll hook you up. I'll send you a bottle, and then if you like it, you can order some. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'd, I'd take some too. Yeah, we'll I'll, get to Bee House, everybody. Beehouse dot com and uh, check it out. Beehouse dot buzz. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's dot com. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, right. Um, but Braden, you know, we kind of glossed over you. I mean, we said the birthday, and you know, a little bit of the nomad lifestyle that you're living, and some of the stuff mm-hmm. with the sales, and a few other things. Lunch with Amar. You have anything else that you wanted to mention? I didn't want you to think I didn't give you enough um, airtime. Got some stuff I'm working on that I can't mention. You know, I just bought a. Um, a portfolio. I'll talk about a few, I'll talk about a few names. I can't talk about how much or where or any of that, but I can talk about. I'll just tell you the names I bought. Give me your opinion. Um, I took a flyer on some um, premium um, new TLDs. I bought um, I dot Golf. I bought E dot Capital. A dot Capital. AI dot Dating and AI dot Games. Hmm. That's it. I mean, are, were they all like basic reg fee type domains, like hundred dollars or less, or did you pay like real money for them? There, there. I, I paid. No, I paid real money for them. Um, and but they're all uh, standard renewals. Okay, I, I think that's kind of yes. Yeah, so that actually answered both my questions. The uh, yeah. So I is in the letter I dot golf. I dot golf single character E dot capital A dot capital, and then AI dot games and AI dot dating. Yeah, I think I personally, for me, I mean, I think I probably like the AI, the two AI domains, the best at this moment, um, out of the five. Um, but I think they're all pretty. I mean, they're all pretty interesting. We have, you know, it's funny. I was going through our portfolio, the media options portfolio today, and we've got a couple of different, um, you know, some some names with some interesting extensions and things. And some of them are hacks, like de dot co, like you know, so it's like deco, right? Um, and things, although dot co is a little bit more traditional, but. Um, you know, there were a few that were kind of like that, you know, one letter and then, uh, but I think the AI dot games is, is that what it is? AI dot games. Mm-hmm. I add that dot dating. I think those are both pretty strong. What do you guys think? Josh, Shane. I think that's how you do it. Like if you're gonna, if you're going to take a, a chance on some of the new TLDs, well, they're not so new anymore, but yeah, you go with great keywords or, or letters, short letter. I don't think you're going to go like, b64 like that's not what i mean by short but Mm -hmm. e capital and 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 we know that capital and media names do well in dot com so if you ever go to the auctions they go for extraordinarily higher amounts than just a regular name so if it's Mm. it's keyword media keyword capital check out name bio you'll see that they go for a lot more and it's because i check it out all the time in the auctions i don't buy them but i see that they do so i think that's those are good TLDs to go with. And AI, but you can't miss. Like it's AI. Doesn't really I mean, matter. AI.games games is, is pretty crazy. And AI.dating yeah, AI. is also pretty slamming. Yeah, yeah. AI I, mean, I I love the AI.games. It's probably my favorite out of that group. Which one was what what without telling us how much you paid, what was the most expensive domain from an acquisition? It's a portfolio. Yeah, no, AI. I mean, they're individually priced, but it was oh, a I got you. fully purchase. But um, and I bought I bought a bunch of other stuff too. Um but uh, AI dot games was was the most expensive. Yep, that checks out, man. So, Josh, what do you think? I mean, I find it hard with these new GTLDs, man, because there's a lot of really good ones that don't sell. I guess, like, so it's like it's one of those things where, I, like, it wouldn't surprise me if I saw it sell for a lot of money. But it also wouldn't surprise me if I saw it on like the available list. It's like really like that's how that's how crazy it is, and that's how little of a market there seems to be. But they seem to sell in weird like waves, you know. So I wouldn't mind. Ha- I certainly wouldn't mind having those and, and renewing those in my portfolio, and I could definitely see them selling. But I just get I I don't have a pulse on it to be quite honest with you. It's very hard for me to speak in any kind of educated way because I just don't have a pulse on it. Yeah, and, no, and what is. what and what Josh says is also the reason why people say what they say. So, for instance, Ocean XYZ came up for auction, and it wasn't gathering that much attention. So, you all the people that say, "How could those sell for two hundred thousand dollars when Ocean comes through and barely sells for anything?" That's 
that's how, you know, Josh says it exactly. You'll see things that come through available and you'll think why, and then you'll see another one that sells for a hundred grand and you say, okay, you know, those are, so that it gives data points for both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, you want to say something? No, I, I, I also don't have a pulse on the value of these. Um, so I'm just taking a flyer on them. They all seem like pretty good names to me, but there's just there's just no public data to, to support pricing. And, and here's the thing. you got to take a flyer if you want to be at the front of the queue when it comes to these kind of things, right? The front of the line or whatever you want to say. Like, Swetha. That person who doesn't exist, she took a flyer on XYZ when other people weren't taking a flyer on XYZ. She did really well as a result of that. And there are plenty of other examples. Um, and, you know, this isn't this isn't always complete science. There's a little bit of art to what we do as well. And sometimes there's a little bit of gamble to what we do as well. And sometimes you got to take a little bit of risk in order to, to get the big rewards. So mm-hmm. if you're not taking flyers on a few things that other people aren't doing, you're not quite doing it right. You got you got to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, and maybe not quite doing it right as much as not availing yourself to the potential the big rewards, right? The big wins, you know, are going. Yeah, to I mean, like you, you could, you you could do be, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I think that's, that's a fair point. That's a good clarification. And I think about the Swetha thing a lot because you know you think about how to you know register, buy, you know acquire, renew, you know a ton of dot XYZs and whatever it might be for anybody who's early in any of the extensions that have caught popular, you know, that become popular, the dot AI domains, right? Are another example of like you know having a sense of what's coming, having an idea of what drives people to buy domains and end users to acquire domains, you know, having the ability and the the you know the process to be able to get them sold. Um, but it does; it requires some you know you've got to put yourself sure. out there a bit. You know, you've got to allocate some money and you got to take some risk. I mean, it's just you know it, those are you know you're taking uh, you know those are gambles but if you want to this get this russian dude this russian dude that has the most insane dot ai ai portfolio uh he he bought them the majority of them and not like not all completely like registration fee like he paid up for a few of these five six seven eight nine ten years ago long time ago uh, so, big so portfolio like, too. yeah huge portfolio and i mean yes He's, a, he's now got to a place where he's going to do great. But for the last eight years or nine years, he has been digging a massive hole every year with with um <laughs> with the with the renewal fees and and yeah, no one tw- what's at one twenty? Oh, it's the best AI renewal fee you can get. What's the mm, spaceship is at like sixty five right now? I think, but you've got to do minimum two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even the renewal fees are, are, you know, that's a lot of, uh, you know, risk and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, that's a pretty big chunk of <laughs> recurring costs that you've got to be able to absorb for a certain amount of time. And then, you know, we talk about it a lot as to what is the timeline for when you sell a domain, how long, you know, we say it, how long have you had it? Well, in some cases you guys have had names for 10, 20 years before you sell them. Right. I mean, it's been yeah. that long and yeah, I mean, it's, it takes some pretty you know, big, uh, you know, I want to say if it's a, you know, if it's a woman, I don't want to, you know, but it takes some, some, some Guts, real some fortuitousness, you know, to be able to say, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and invest thousands and thousands of dollars into these. And, you know, because I have some conviction and I have a belief that these are going to be needed and, and desired and wanted. And, and, you know, um, so yeah, no, I think that's, and, and I agree. I mean, it's, I think about when the new TLD program initially launched and it was this sort of gold rush, but it was almost like, you know, and everyone selling the domains to the picks and shovels and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there were a lot of things that didn't work. You know, you think about even the Rick Schwartz's experience with Dot Moby, Shane's experience with Dot WS, right? Like there are plenty of like things where people took chances on stuff that they thought were going to pan out and that didn't. And, you know, you have to be willing to take and live with that risk, especially if it's not successful. And, um, you know, and getting a pulse on this. And then when you're talking about the alternate extensions, and this is kind of a theme that sort of played through that this show about non-coms is that, you know, once you're opening that up to where, Hey, I, I'm cool with not going with a dot com. Well, okay. Well, how do we try to figure out where people are going to hone in? Because they've got a ton of options, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, which is why I think the, the sort of the name of the game. And this is what Shane said in response to what to Braden's purchases is, 
if you're going to buy these domains, you've got to buy like the best of the best. And you're talking about one letter, two letter, specific word. I mean, we have green dot house, you know what I mean? Like, you know, things where the right of the dot and the left of the dot are so synergistic, if that's a word, that it is literally a no brainer. And at some point somebody is going to absolutely pay some real money for that because it's just that good. And when you look at the alternatives and when your dot com is taken, um, you know, and, 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 you know, and the alternatives start to make sense, but where do they make sense to, to, you know, when real dollars are involved? So, yeah. All right. Well, good know, stuff, man. man. We'll see. I feel, like, see. I feel like those, I feel like those ones are still very, very like green dot house. And those, I feel like those ones are still TBD to be honest. It's like, yeah. I have like angel dot investments, health dot supplies. Like I have some good ones like yeah. that. I just like, Four, it's been like four years and I'm just looking. I'm like, what? Not even a, an, an inquiry? Like, what? <laughs> well, you know, I think it also shows you where we are in the adoption of, you know, non-coms as people like, you know, realizing that these things are even, you know, viable domain names. You know, I mean, like, look, even with so, .xyz. Like you, think about, you think about like dot, dot .ws and like .cc, like .cc, like that's, that, that shit's totally viable for me. If you're going to go with like a .io, why no, you, that's how like, that's how I am. I'm like, it's short. The letters it stands for cryptocurrency. Yeah. Like, why didn't cryptocurrency pick up dot cc? And like, yeah, isn't that right? So many, there's a so chain many like dot cc is available, like under a thousand dollars. Like, great names, but well, it's it becomes like, a tyranny of choice at that point too. You know, you have so many options once you're willing to go outside of this sort of tried and true. And if your okay. budget dictates that you can't afford the, you know, the you, Really own your brand and that's what i love about catched i don't know if you ever go to catch.com but they you know they said i can't be drop catch i can't be park so i'm going to go to these other tlds i learn a new tld every day when i go there i'm like <laughs> i didn't even know that existed i didn't know that existed yeah. it's there's love literally it. two or three that i've never seen before that come through they got caught. And I was like, I didn't even know you could catch that. Like, I didn't there's know a lot of there's that. more coming. And then, and that doesn't even include all the, like the handshake versions of these, these domains. You <laughs> yeah. Know, it's really crazy. There, so. there are a lot of islands out there. <laughs> exactly. So, so well, there's a lot of country codes that we've never heard of. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why the mainland is where it's at. And at the end of the day, you know, dot com is still going to be the mothership bringing people to, you know, the, the ocean yeah. front property, if you will, because it really is the, um, you know, because of the validity and the fact that, you know, some of the stuff like you even see it about dot X, Y, Z, where people say, hey, we get hung up in all these fraud filters. You know, I can't I don't get my emails and things like that. And, you know, I mean, I remember when new TLDs came out and you would try to go and sign up for leaving just like an account somewhere. And they say, give me your email address, you know, just like a very simple account creation path that you would put in a dot whatever, a dot store, for example, and it'd be like, please enter a valid email. And you're like, no, my email is JT at you know, blank dot store. And it's like, nope, like enter a valid email, you know? And it's like, okay, yeah. you know, so I think that, and because it's like trying to hope that everybody catches on over time. I mean, I think people are, are, you know, to this is very much to Shane's point that you brought up earlier, you know, people are open to non-coms if it's the right fit, how to figure out which ones are going to be the ones that are, you know, people are going to hone in on. It's hard. So it's, uh, It'll be interesting to see. All right. Well, look, we covered a ton of ground. I actually think this was a fucking awesome episode, guys. I think we brought a lot of really good insight to the table. I super appreciate y'all being here, my co-host. As always, it's super, super appreciated. And to the audience, as I say in every show, thank you so much for tuning in. Without you, there is no us. Please let us know if you got any comments, questions, feedback. We covered a lot of ground. Hit us up. We're not hard to find. Hit us on Twitter. Check out the actual site. Throw a comment up. Do what you do. Um, and then, or even just check us out. We're on YouTube now. Make sure you hit us with some likes, subscribe to the stuff, like all that good stuff. It's much appreciated and uh, allows us to be better in touch. But like I said, we're not hard to find and thank you for tuning in. So with that, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. We will see y'all next time right here. Peace out. <laughs>